This video is showing one of the latest instruments we've been playing with in our lab. This is a model K30 carbon dioxide sensor made by CO2sensors.com. Literally, that's the website. You can just go to that site and order it up. It's a printed circuit board with an optical non-dispersive infrared CO2 sensor uh, mounted on the board. It also, uh, this one particular one, has a manifold on it that we've bolted onto it. That's another $40 or so. The actual CO2 sensor is only about $85, so this is a very, very affordable gas analyzer that you can get for an instrumentation lab. It's intended to be an OEM part, so if you were manufacturing some HVAC equipment that needed to monitor the room CO2, you could order this from CO2 sensor and make it part of your equipment, which is why it's sold as a bare-bones package. Anyway, it suits our purposes quite well. We soldered a few wires onto it for power and for signal. It takes DC power. Uh, roughly about 5 to 9 volts DC to power it up and it outputs a signal that's either 0 to 4 volts DC analog or 1 to 5 volts DC analog depending on the level of power supply you're using. This manifold that we have attached to it allows you to connect a hose and actually pass a sample of gas through the analyzer for analysis. If you don't have the manifold on here it picks up the CO2 concentration through ambient air by diffusion right through the membrane on the CO2 sensor. We wanted to be able to plumb this in to an external process, and so that's why we got the manifold. We currently have this wired into our homemade SCADA system, which we see up here. Uh, we see a lot of stuff on this screen. Feel free to ignore all the other data. We're just looking at channel 12 right here, analytical transmitter number 12, and currently we're reading 797 parts per million CO2, which is above atmospheric. Atmospheric is about 400 ppm. And the reason it's above that is because I'm talking. And as I'm exhaling, we have carbon dioxide in the vicinity of the sensor, which gets picked up. Uh, there's actually a lot of CO2 in human uh, exhalation. So you want to be careful when you're working on these sensors that your own breath doesn't uh, interfere with it. It's actually a really good lesson for students because it lets them know that they can actually be a factor in the calibration of the sensor, an unwanted factor in skewing the calibration of the sensor. So we can demonstrate quickly how we can uh, drive this to a higher signal level. I'm going to intentionally blow some air from my mouth through this tube, and we'll see how the sensor reads. I'll occasionally have to hit the control R here to refresh the web browser uh, to look at our uh, CO2 reading. But as I do this, we'll see the reading go up. There it's up over 1,000 ppm. There's 2000, 2015, we're basically full range right now. And we've got our SCADA system programmed. So uh, above a certain threshold, it reads CO2 levels too high. It's got to come within uh, a fairly narrow range to read normal again. So we're still saturated high. To get this down, I'm going to turn on a source of compressed air. Got a very small amount of compressed air coming out of here. I'll just play that stream of compressed air into the end of the sample tube. I'll keep a bit of an air gap there so I don't build up any significant pressure inside the sensor. And I'll refresh the SCADA system. There we go. Now we're 1,441 parts per million. 944. 723. And the trend continues. Now what we do for calibration of this is we'll pass a gas sample through the analyzer that contains no CO2 at all. A very easy one is a, uh, a sample of argon gas used for welding. We just get a sample of pure argon, pass that through, and we use that as our 0% CO2 reference. And then we can use the atmospheric uh, concentration, roughly 400 parts per million, as our span. This particular model only goes to uh, 2,000 parts per million. And so it can be a bit challenging to find a, a calibration gas sample appropriate for it. The CO2 sensors also makes other models that read higher. In the future, we may be experimenting with them and be able to use 100% CO2 as a span gas. But for right now, we're using argon as our 0% calibration gas, and atmosphere as our 100% calibration gas. So that's our system. And again, the purpose of the video is to show you, uh, ways you a, a very simple way that you can get into gas analysis in an instrumentation lab for very little money. The manifold and the PCB sensor itself cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $120. It makes it very, very affordable. And again, it teaches some important lessons to students, um, including the diffusion of gases. If you have this manifold off, you can actually watch a uh, 
the CO2 levels change with ambient conditions, the CO2 diffusing through the membrane into the analyzer. It also shows you the contamination effect of just exhaling CO2 near the analyzer and for students to be aware of uh, the significance of that sort of uh, error source. And of course the soldering of wires, the reading of the manuals and the configuration of the unit. Students have to figure out you know, which pins to jumper to do a zero calibration and a span calibration. Uh, it's all kinds of learning packed into this one fairly affordable and small CO2 sensor.